Communication and social interactions are at the heart of our daily life. But those are very complex skills that are often disrupted in children and youth with neurodevelopmental conditions. And 22Q makes no exception to that. According to recent models, social functioning and communication are influenced by several building blocks. Language and communication and social cognition. And of course, there are also important influences of the environment. In this sequence, we are going to discuss what we know about these important building blocks and how they influence social communication. We are also going to discuss the topic of the co-occurrence uh, between 22Q and autism spectrum disorder, and we are also going to provide some important recommendations regarding the intervention strategies for social difficulties. We are going to discuss about this first building block, which is speech and language. During infancy and childhood, the vast majority of children with 22Q have a preserved motivation to communicate and to be in contact with other people. However, they have some specific challenges that can make this communication more difficult. For example, they can have palatal anomalies and hypernasal speech, which can interfere with their ability to make them uh, understandable. They can also have some specific expressive language difficulties. In our experience, all of these difficulties can really trigger a form of social anxiety and lead children with 22Q to decrease the number of, of social interaction that they are going to seek in their daily life, especially outside of the direct family circle. So when communication is impaired very early on, for example, during infancy and early childhood, it is very important to put in place early intervention strategies. It can be, for example, in the form of augmentative or alternative communication uh, strategies, such as the use of pictograms. Later on during childhood, usually the expressive language increases and most children with 22Q become fluent speakers. However, there are specific challenges that remain in the expressive domains. For example, they tend to have initiation difficulties and they have difficulties also to structure a narrative. There, there are some research that show that uh, the sentences that they use also tend to be shorter and grammatically more simple. Regarding comprehension, uh, we know that most children with 22Q have a lower level of vocabulary and they tend to have what we call an atypical profile in terms of language, in the sense that in a large number of children, the understanding abilities are lower than the expressive abilities. This atypical profile can really lead to a risk of overestimate the child's level of understanding and comprehension. So this profile can really contribute to the feeling of isolation of a child. Indeed, the kids are often, uh, often shy and they tend not to ask for help or to ask for clarification when they don't understand something. So uh, it's important to take into account this profile uh, that is comprised of lower comprehension abilities. We are now going to talk about this important second building block, which is social cognition. We know that several aspects of the cognitive profile of children and youth with 22Q can really have an influence on how they are going to um, interact with others in their daily life. And in particular, we are going to talk about social cognition, which is a set of complex abilities that we use to process and to react to social information. There is a lot of research that shows us that uh, children adolescents and adults with 22Q have an atypical visual exploration of social information. For example, when they look at a face, we know that they tend to look to a lesser extent to the eyes region and they tend to look more at the mouth and the nose. And of course, this basic alteration can have an impact on more complex abilities, such as the ability to recognize faces or the ability to read the expression on a person's face. There are also studies that show that 
children and youth with 22Q have what we call theory of mind difficulties, which is the ability to understand and infer mental state in other people. So, of course, all of these difficulties in the area of social cognition can have an impact on how they can function socially, and it can also be a trigger of anxiety during social interactions. But, of course, we know that uh, the environment has also an important influence on the social functioning of youth with 22Q. In particular, we are going to talk about the experience of adverse interpersonal experiences that can really shape the experience, how children with 22Q experience their social interaction. There are few studies in this topic, but the one that were conducted showed that there is a high rate of bullying and peer victimization in children with neurodevelopmental condition and probably in 22Q as well, with percentages rising up to 60%. So identifying a potential bullying situation is really recommended in all children with 22Q. So probably as the results of complex interaction between speech and language difficulties, social cognition difficulties, and in addition sometimes adverse interpersonal experiences, we know that a lot of youth with 22Q have social impairments in their daily life. And we are going to discuss about that with Clémence Feller, um, PhD student at the University of Geneva. Welcome, Clémence. Hi. So, what can we say about the social, social phenotype in 22Q? Um, well, people with 22Q are often described to be more shy, socially inhibited, and a recent study found that they tend to spend more time with the people they live with, so the really close family circle, and less time with the same age peers. And uh, during adulthood, it was shown that they are less likely to be married and to have children compared to the general population. And how do these difficulties evolve during lifetime? Well, these social difficulties, and especially social withdrawal, tend to become more pronounced during adolescence. And uh, this can be the result of a deleterious visual circle, uh, notably following exposure to stressful social experiences. But it can also be related to some um, internal factors, such as the atypical development of certain regions in the brain. And finally, um, the early onset of social difficulties can also be an early war warning signal for the emergence of psychosis. Yeah, so it's Im very important to keep that uh, yeah, exactly. in mind. Okay. And during the social interaction, what are the specific difficulties that you Swiss 22Q encounter? Well, interestingly, the, most of the things that we know about social difficulties come from questionnaires or interviews that are completed by caregivers and parents, which give us a really broad picture of the social difficulties. And that's why in our lab we are specifically interested in using uh, some methods that come as close to possible to what is happening in daily life. So, for instance, uh, we use role plays. And what we found is that uh, it was harder for people with 22Q to initiate and then maintain the conversations. And we also observed that they were a bit less assertive. It was harder for them to make their point of view be heard by the other or to express a disagreement, for instance. Oh, that's very interesting. And what other types of methodology do you use? Well, we assess them in daily life uh, by asking them about their mood, their mood, thoughts and context, so whether they are alone or not, directly on the smartphones, several times per day during almost a week. And what we found is that uh, when they were alone, uh, people with 22Q reported to appreciate this aloneness to the same extent as the general population. Um, and also that they prefer to be with others to the same extent, which argues toward an intact social motivation. And on the other hand, when they were in company of people, um, they, even though they reported to appreciate the social interactions to the same extent, they said that they'd prefer to be alone um, more often than, than the general population, which showed that even though the social interactions are appreciated, that they, they come as a certain cost. Thank you very much, uh, Clemence. So during this interview, we have discussed about the social functioning difficulties that youth with 22Q experience in their daily life. But one can wonder whether children and adolescents with 22Q can be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder or ASD, which is a neurodevelopmental condition 
characterized by pervasive social and communication difficulties. There are a number of studies that show very high rates of ASD in 22Q, around 40%. But these studies have been mainly conducted with parent reports of the behavior of the child, and not so many studies used direct observation measures. And those who did found much lower rates. So what this tells us is that there are social and communicative difficulties in 22Q that are sometimes pervasive and meet the diagnostic criteria for ASD, but that are probably a bit qualitatively different from what we know from idiopathic autism spectrum disorder. So if there are specific concerns about communication and social interaction in a child with 22Q, it's important to have a specialized assessment by a team that is specialized in the field of autism spectrum disorder. In the last part of this sequence, we are going to discuss about important intervention strategies for social difficulties. We know that most children and youth will benefit from intervention strategies in this domain, but there is probably not a one-size-fits-all strategy, and it's important to really have a full assessment to really identify the social profile and the difficulties in a specific uh, child. There are very few intervention studies in the field of 22Q, so one of the possibilities is to use and adapt intervention strategies that have been developed for other populations like autism or intellectual disability. We have already discussed that when there are important and prevalent communication difficulties early in life, uh, it's important to put in place augmentative and alternative communication strategies. Uh, it's also important to consider the use of surgical intervention if there are uh, some speech difficulties that interfere with the ability uh, for the child to speak and to make him understood. In terms of social cognition, several studies have shown that cognitive remediation can help uh, to improve the recognition of faces and facial expressions. For example, there is a cognitive remediation program called Visavi -vis that can be used over 12 weeks to work on the recognition of facial expression through an increase of the attention toward the eye regions. Two small studies have shown that it's possible to train and to teach social skills in adolescents and young adults with 22Q, even through an online format. And finally, it's very important to treat mental health difficulties that can arise in 22Q as they can have a significant impact on mental health. In this sequence, we have covered the different dimensions that can have an influence on social functioning in youth with 22Q. We have also discussed about the co-occurrence with autism spectrum disorders, and we provided important recommendations for the intervention in this domain.